10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lift off. And I swear I learned how to read a calendar in the last seven days. I kid you not. Greetings, good evening. How you doing on this special edition of the Beyond Ringside Shooters Gallery? Live as with this is being done, and I want to say thank you, Mother Nature. Thank you, Alabama Power. Thank you, Internet. Thank you, Server Room, and everybody else I can possibly thank. And I also just realized a few minutes ago, and the guys heard me on this one in uh, production chat, if it were not for the fact that we had leap year this year, Today would have actually been April 1st, which would have means that I have persevered the longest freaking April Fool's Day in history. And that means Friday is actually April 1st. This is Thursday, March 31st. Welcome into the Shooter's Gallery, live at a multiple location station, the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane in Studio One. Zooming over one state to my left, actually right side looking in, left side looking out, over in the Peach State behind the promoter's desk, greeting Shane Knowles. Uh, how are you guys doing? I'm wonderful. I just want to lay this out here from the onset. I almost feel guilty that we're doing this at this point. I don't want you to feel pressured, but I hope everything goes off without a hitch. No, there, no, man. There's there's no pressure whatsoever. I I don't feel. Pre- I never succumb to peer pre- peer pressure. Peer pressure. Son of a bitch. I'll get it right one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> On the long distance dedication line this evening, from the corner to corner radio, Stan Grub. How you doing tonight, buddy? Hello from the other side. What's going on, everybody? Ooh, he pulled up an Aerosmith song this week. Damn, there you go, dude. Uh, that, that was actually uh, uh, Adele, but, you know, hey, Aerosmith, Adele. They, they sound similar, yeah, yeah. And actually, you could also pull up a Red Hot Chili Peppers reference. We're just like, we're running with the music trivia from last week. We had too much fun with it. First off, thank you to everybody catching us through all the resources available for the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Greatly appreciated for everybody listening on the replay side of life. Thank you for catching us all the way across the board, whether it be through iTunes, Podomatic, Spreacher, Spreaker, Stitcher, Archive.org, and iHeartRadio. Greatly appreciated. Um, before we kick into everything real quick, um, Shane, I'm going to toss the ball in your court. Let's go ahead and play with the trivia question. What was the bonus trivia this week at Useless Trivia? Oh, right off the bat, I can tell you guys had such a good time last week. Uh, I'm prepared this evening. Uh, you want the bonus trivia. I like how you go, you know, you don't want the question one out of 20 questions to open off. You want the one that pays the money. Yeah. Uh, he wants the money shot. <laughs> oh, wow. Very nice. Rob and Brian would be proud of you for that one, Stan. <laughs> it only nice took for me that, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, which film made in the decade of the 1990s um, is the last film, or the most recent film, I should say, to feature two actresses both nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress for the same film? Oh, God. Okay. Can I ask the audience? You can phone a friend. The only thing is, it's Mr. Grubb and no one else. I was about to say, if I can ask the audience, I'd be an even bigger poo-poo because there's nobody here but me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a feeling I should know this movie because I believe that the, um, the actress involved is Meryl Streep. Actually, that is incorrect. She's nominated every other time, but uh, not for this particular film. And the thing is, I think, Saying in jest, if she's nominated, no one else in her film is going to be. Man, that's pretty much true. Kind of like Susan Lucci, always a bridesmaid and finally won one. I'm drawing a blank. Stan, any ideas? Um, I'm probably going to botch the title, but is it Stepmom? No, uh, that's a good guess, though. Julia and Susan Sarandon. Uh, I will say Susan Sarandon. Is one of the actresses. I had a hunch that was my second choice mm-hmm. of actresses, but Meryl Streep normally just, but she actually didn't do a whole lot during the nineties, if my memory serves me correctly. And I know the, uh, for some reason, my gut wants to say Sally Field is the other one, but I know that's not right. You are correct if that is incorrect. Okay. Oh, I know what it is then. 
Go for it. It's uh, uh, Thelma and Louise. Ding, ding, ding. We have a letter. Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon for Thelma and Louise. Really now? Leave it Both to st- nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress in the same year for the same film. That's crazy. Leave it to Stan to get the chick flick. <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> Although I will sit back and say, speaking of Gina Davis, I'm I, I'm I'm really just going to go ahead and lay this one out there. And for everybody who wants to take their pot shots at me, that's fine and dandy on this one. Um, I still say that in my book, a league of a league of their own. Gina Davis absolutely shined. She was a tremendously bright star and she helped help hold that movie together. And I think, you know, there was really no bad casting in that one because even Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell were decent in that movie. Oh, you just went into my wheelhouse. That is one of my probably 10 to 15 favorite films of all time. It's one of the few times I've been able to stomach Rosie O'Donnell and thought she was perfect for the role. Uh, Tom Hanks as Jimmy Dugan. Yeah. The manager, fantastic. Uh, Gary Marshall, the owner. Uh, yep. uh, yeah, wonderful casting all the way around. And it had that perfect mix of uh, drama with some sad moments and this outright humor. And even though it was a film about ladies' baseball during World War II, it still had that grit and grind of like a Major League Baseball clubhouse. Well, yeah. That's kind of in only ways to me that baseball films done by Kevin Costner have been able to capture. True good point. Stan, your thoughts? Um, I mean, if we talk about baseball movies, I think, I, I honestly think that, uh, Field of Dreams is probably the best one. It, 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 okay, this is where I'm weird because I thought Costner, this is where you're weird? I thought Costner yep. was better in Bull Durham than he was in Field of Dreams. Two totally different types of stories, but I mean, I, I can see your point on either one. But I, I actually think that the <sighs> not to not to yet quote another one, but you know, the true love of the game, which is another oh. Kevin Costner baseball movie. Um, I, I think Field of Dreams probably takes it. I think it's probably one of the best ones. That or Eight Men Out. Now I'll give you That's eight minutes. Go, yeah. for, for love of the game, uh, one of my favorite columnists, Bill Simmons, the sports guy, totally agree. If you take out the forty-five minutes of love, romantic things with Kelly Preston, for love of the game is a hell of a baseball. <laughs> I mean, not that there's anything wrong with looking at Kelly Preston. Right, right. I just overall, uh, I, I remember once I guess we probably will never bring up that film again. I remember uh, he plays Billy Chapel, the aging pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. And his final game, he doesn't know it, uh, is in Yankee Stadium. And when he gets there, there's that one guy, the New Yorker, that's saying F you chapel over and over. And even at the end of the game, when he's got two outs in the ninth working on a perfect, he leads the crowd in the standing ovation. Like, Come on, guys, get up, respect. And that's kind of symbolic of New York, I think, especially with their sports fans. I got to come back over to uh, League of Their Own for one hot second because another person who actually, in my opinion, made certain parts of that movie was John Lovitz. Oh yeah! Oh my God! <laughs> he was I, he was the smarty like town scout. No, just yeah. I'm sorry. I'm jumping all over people. Sorry. No, I do the same. I, yeah, he he should have been nominated. I thought for the Academy Award for supporting actor. I agree. He was that good? I I agree wholeheartedly. The lines that were given to him were absolutely beautiful, and the way that he pulled off the character was even better. Um, just, the line uh, that makes me just lose my lunch all the time from laughing is when the girls are running down the train and he leans over into a lady's lap and she says, sir, your knee. And he says, like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to kind of contradict myself because I said best baseball movie ever, but honest to God, best baseball movie is the natural. I've still got to go with eight men out. Uh, the natural, there's just something about the whole story of Roy Hobbs and, and the old, old style baseball, just that in and of itself is, is probably one of the best ones. I mean, you can, you can look at, you can look at some of the other ones like eight men out tells a, a real, really a gritty story of baseball. But I think when you look at just 
the the total story of of how a guy comes from nothing just and and makes it even after the adversity of of being shot you know having all of the potential of a you know a Mickey Mantle kind of thing it, it was really cool and, and it's one of the few movies I can remember watching with my dad. You know, with the exception of being shot, I'd have to actually have to sit back and say that premise sounds so much like Rocky, it's not even funny. Um, You know, there's a lot of parallels you can draw. And that movie still to this day amazes me that they got away with making that movie for as little as they could. And it took Sylvester Stallone everything he could to actually get the starring role. And it was his damn movie. <laughs> Wasn't it only like $40,000 or no, something? They made that movie for less than a million dollars. I was going to say, uh, to me, the two sports that Hollywood has seemingly gotten right has been baseball and boxing over the years. I mean, there's good football films, there's good basketball films, there's good golf films. And it seems baseball boxing, to me, has had more quality. And I'll throw one more out there. It doesn't have the, I guess, like the nostalgic look at the game or certainly that father-son moment anyone can relate to, like in uh, Field of Dreams. <laughs> As far as overall baseball fans, when you talk about quotable lines, 1989's Major League. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. One and two. Oh, I love two. Yeah, the third when they went back to the minors and it wasn't for some reason rated R anymore and they really had to neuter Bob Euchre as Harry Dole in the, in the broadcast, aside from most of the regulars not being in the film, it just didn't capture the same magic. But you brought up Major League Two. One of my favorite lines on that is when... Uh, Rick Vaughn and uh, Willie Mays Hayes get to fight in the dugout, and <laughs> Harry Doyle says, "Look, like Mays is trying to hit Vaughn, and why not? Everybody else in the league has." And he's like, yes. "I don't know, Vaughn. It looks like Hayes is uh, favoring his left hand. That could come back to hurt him in the later rounds." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a real good you good mentioned memory. boxing and baseball movies, but the replacements has to has to really signify a great football movie. Okay, look, y'all are going to talk football movies, and I know that one of my favorites of all time is going to be overlooked. So, folks, I'm just going to go ahead and lay this one out there. I don't care what anybody says. There is no movie in the football genre. It doesn't matter. You can't touch North Dallas 40. I thought you were going to say Brian's song. I <laughs> thought that's where Eddie was headed. Eddie. Nope. <laughs> I went for the raunchy body one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh one of my favorite football films, and much like Major League, I saw it in theaters with Necessary Rough. Yes. Yeah, that, that was a good one. Armadillos. It was. Yep. The program was good, too. Yes. Deleted scene and all. Now, why can't they do this when it comes to wrestling and put together either a good comedy parody and no, Beyond the Mat doesn't count, or... Well, 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 I mean, good wrestler. Wrestler. the wrestler, uh, the wrestler was good. I mean, I, I'm good. Uh, a great friend of the family for the beyond ringside family of shows is the associate producer of the wrestler, Mr. Evan Ginsburg. He's been on, with me on back to basics on a number of different occasions. Great intellect, great mind for the business and also a great mind for entertainment. Um, so folks, for those of you listening, if you ever get a chance to look up Evan Ginsburg on Facebook and uh, Twitter and definitely check out Legends TV, which is normally live on Saturday mornings, I believe at 10 p.m. East, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Got to double check my numbers on that. It may be 10. It may be 11 Eastern times. <laughs> I think it goes right neck to neck with us. Um, but can I, uh, yeah, can I, can I say this? Cause we're on trivia and now we're on baseball movies. This was a list bonus question 15 last night. I gave the teams a particular film. You give me the real life Major League Baseball team that the main character or main cast of characters played for in the film. If you guys would like to try that one, we'll go speed round on it. Ten okay. seconds to answer. Major League Cleveland Indians. Rookie of the Year Minnesota Twins. Oh, uh, Chicago Cubs. Damn. Uh, Little Big League, which was next on the list. That is the Minnesota team. Right. Uh, um, this was a tough one. The 2003 film starring Dennis Quaid, The Rookie. Oh, that's uh, Devil Rays. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, we've already talked about this one, Eight Men Out. <laughs> I figured, Stan, I'd give you the softball. It. Damn it. <laughs> 
It's the Havana the Black Sox. It's the Havana um, cigars. Yeah. And the last one is uh, for love of the game. Oh crap! Tigers. Yes. You didn't take sure. the easy one in Angels in the outfield. Uh, yeah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> People be like, I, I don't know, <laughs> who was that? <laughs> The other and, one, you, uh, did, you sure, really, you well, didn't I'm even sure take we'll talk both. more about WrestleMania coming up, but I want to get this trivia question in because I did it this week because there's a couple of guys at Mellow Mushroom that's like, you know, your wrestling trivia for being a promoter sometimes seems kind of lax. And I said, well, dude, if you're as hardcore fan as I am, then the general questions for the public may seem rather easy. But I, I snuck this one in there on it. <sighs> Who is the most irrelevant wrestler to ever compete in a singles match at a WrestleMania? And that's, you know, that's not what he's called, but I think over the years that's just what it's become. He competed at WrestleMania 2 against Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, boy. You know, all this time I was getting ready to pipe in with Roman Reigns that I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> And that's no good. Um, kind, of, kind of drive your memory. No entrance music. He was uh, a black gentleman that wore blue tights with white boots. S.D. Jones? That is close. S.D. did compete yeah, against uh, Bundy in WrestleMania 1. But, uh, the reason I say even more irrelevant is S.D. Jones did have his own LJN figure. This guy, I was shocked, got a singles match at a Pistol WrestleMania. Pistol Pez, well, I mean, look, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it's not it, go ahead and say Coco Beware and get it out of the way. <laughs> Coco Beware. <laughs> it was not Mr. Ranger Roth either. <laughs> he would have gotten an action Ranger figure. Ross? I don't know who is it. George Wells. Oh my god, I forgot all about that. And he was actually a very talented in ring performer. Yes, George actually got some offense on Jake before submitting to the DDT. I think the match went around eight minutes and thirty six seconds. Wow. Was that, was that Jake's uh, debut at WrestleMania? It was. Yeah, WrestleMania too. Wow. And that's such a forgotten match. I mean, no disrespect to George Wells, but yeah, a lot of people forget Jake. They thought his first Mania match was with Alice Cooper against Hockey Tom a year later. Yeah. They bring up the pretty much the most popular match that he's done to. Coop! You know, I've got a question that I want to bounce out to everybody. And I know that people inside the industry as well as fans li listen to this show. And I'm, by the way, once again, you're listening to a special edition of the Shooters Gallery. Um, because of extenuating circumstances, thanks to the weather and thanks to our server, unfortunately, we were not able to go live. Um, so we're doing a bare bones edition because things had to be switched around. And the way things work, and I just realized something I could have done, so I'll do it in post-production. Uh, my dumb ass. <laughs> every once in a while I get something right, and every other time, yeah, that's the other 99 times that I mess it up. You know, Stan, I know that you've heard about prank situations, people pulling ribs on each other. Shane, I know you've seen it a lot more closely, just like I have. And we have a tendency to... Whether it's a, whether it's a rook or whether it's a pure veteran, we have a tendency to forgive and forget because we know the lines that we don't cross. Because we know that if we cross certain lines, somebody gonna get the ass whipped. Mm -hmm. And to which I've got to sit back and say, you know, I'm asking that to ask this. If you are, and I'm just gonna go and use the nickname. If you're Shaggy D or Shaggy P, I'm sorry. If, do you ever, if you are any of his teammates current or future, do you ever trust D'Angelo Russell ever again, Shane? Oh, man. Uh, somehow I knew this was going to be broached this evening with Eddie being a lifelong Lakers fan as well as current events. Uh, I look at it this way. D'Angelo Russell was the number two pick out of Ohio State by the Los Angeles Lakers. With Kobe Bryant retiring, with Flaggy P, Nick Young, and the rest of the roster seemingly, other than Julius Randle, to build around, he was going to be the guy, the unselfish, non-shoot-first point guard, to be able to attract free agents. And to go to your question, if I'm a free agent and I'm already nervous about the situation with the ownership of uh, Jerry Buck, Jim Buck, 
I, how can I trust Angelo Russell? Why would I think that that's going to be an enticing situation for me to go to? Because, and I've heard people over the last 48 hours just saying you can chalk it up to immaturity. And I'm like, no, to me, running a stop sign or speeding is immaturity, perhaps drinking behind the wheel, but knowingly filming. I, and I haven't heard a good reason why yet, other than the, perhaps the prank. Why you would film a teammate talking about possible infidelity and then claiming, I don't know how it got out there on social media. It's like, dude, it had to be either your cell phone, your tablet device, or your camera. Uh, it didn't get uploaded by Casper the Friendly Ghost. So I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, to answer your question, no. And the fact that the reports I'm hearing the Lakers or, you know, other teammates are isolating him in the lunchroom or not wanting to be around him. I'm sorry. I'm not Eddie Lane when you brought up an ass with And if I get young, that's a punch to the face yeah. situation. Stan Grubb, your thoughts? I mean, there's some things you just don't do. I, I mean, nobody's going to trust somebody that's that's willing to film private moments like that. It, it's unfortunate because I'm – I'm guessing that he thought it was some kind of a funny gag, but uh, no, I mean he's it, it, that's a trust issue. That's a trust issue, and that's not a good look for a uh, for a team that's trying to build and go forward and get past some of the immaturities that that we already know they've run into with some of the younger guys. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I can't say that I if it was me, I wouldn't want to be in that locker room. <laughs> You know, you make a reference to immaturity, and I've got to throw this one out there. I mean, it, to me, the pure definition of immaturity when it comes to pulling a rib or a stun on somebody, you get their Sprite and change it out for pure tonic water or soda water and watch the watch the spit take happen. You go up behind them and you pants them on the way to the ring or something of that ilk and pray to God they're wearing proper unders. Or you go ahead and you find a way to surgically inject x lax into their Hershey bar. Ew. <laughs> those, I mean, those are immature pranks. What, what D'Angelo Russell did, I don't know. And the th thing about it is, I still do not, at this point in time right now, it is 1123 Central Daylight Time, March 31st, 2016. I still have yet to hear how the damn video made it out on the public, into, into, into um, the nether, the ether to begin with. Yeah, that was my deal about, uh, he said, I don't know how it got uploaded. And it's like, dude, this wasn't done by the public. This was you with your own personal recording device, no matter how you did it. Camera, tablet, cell phone, iPad. That's in your possession, you alone. And that's just the whole scenario in play. And I almost have to sit back and wonder if WWE is pulling a really bad practical joke on us by actually making us think that they're actually going to put the belt on Reign Sunday at Mania. You knew I'd get around to it sooner or later. You knew I'd get around to it sooner or later. <laughs> you know, and I had a discussion this past Tuesday, especially on Back to Basics, and I looked at what was going to go where as far as the lineup, pre-show and main show. It has been put into play. The pre-show <laughs> will feature three matches. Get this. Dudley's versus the Usos. A 10 Divas tag match and the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Well, let me break in there for a second because they just announced today, just today, that the Battle Royal is going to be on the main show. Okay. I'm, I'm over on Torch right now and they did say they still got the, um, the, the Battle Royal in the main, I mean, on the pre show. They don't have it on the main card. Yeah. Okay. So to find out the Battle Royal is going to be, okay. That's cool with me. Um, I just have to sit back and wonder. Now, I'm I'm feeling a little bit better about the show. Obviously, they realized they were going to be running short and they needed a match that's going to fill up time. I would have gone ahead and put the Dudleys and the Usos on the main show as well, but by the same token, I'm just going to go and lay this one out there. I'm going to save, save predictions for Sunday. And Shane, the offer's on the table to call in Sunday during uh, Beyond Ringside Live. Once again, folks, for those of you listening, there will be a special broadcast of Beyond Ringside Live this coming Sunday, WrestleMania Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern until 7 p.m. Eastern. Mania cuts on, we cut off. It's that easy, because we want to watch the damn show, too. I've asked the question. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say real quick, and what, say, uh, what I'm sure will be a list of gripes if you've listened to me the last few weeks on this program about Mania, 
I want to get this one out of the way too. And what is now expanded into a four and sometimes five hour event, we can't fit everyone on the show. There has to be three on the pre show. It just always baffles me. Well, I look at it like this, and this is something that I'm going to sit back, and I have to lay this one out there properly. And by the way, for the record, to everybody listening in through Ustream this evening, we are live through Ustream. So everybody who's catching us on the old Ustream channel and Ustream mobile, hi there. How you doing? Yes, we're live. Um, <laughs> we found the back door <laughs> and the side door, too. We're just hoping the front door gets kicked in sooner or later. We can actually go in the way we're supposed to go in. We found Timmy Sitch's door. Now, I thought that was back door to China. Well, you said back door. I was just, you know. Anyway. Okay. It's always, it's always sunny on Tammy's door. It's always sunny right. in the rear entrance. Oh. Well, you know what? Oh. I think you just won that one. <laughs> it's uh, it's always it's always sun in the buns. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was gonna be if it was gonna be that type of subject matter as far as the movies go or the movie went, why didn't they just call it Moon Over Sunny? Uh, oh, see that you've already just seen the uh, advertising tag for horror adult film. I, I, I'm catching up now where we're going with this. Oh, okay, yeah, we just went straight to the gutter for five seconds. And <laughs> well, so, I mean, the name. Uh, it, 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 I, mean, I was going to say her video is not called Sunny Side Up. Just curious. Although that would have been a good one too. Maybe that'll be the sequel. Sonny's backside up. <laughs> oh, 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 wait. I, I said, what if you call it Sonny side up in parentheses over easy? Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. That's actually really funny. Stan, you got some catching up to do now, buddy. <laughs> one, I think one, I'm going to have problems sleeping tonight with uh, it's fun in the buns in my head. <laughs> oh. Hot fun in the sunny time. There you go. Where's that song at when I need it? Not able to play it yet. Sorry, ASCAP BMI. You ain't getting money out of me yet. That's why everything here is royalty free. I'm gonna soak up the sun. Yeah. Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl Blow. I mean, Crow. Um, to doom doom. There is osmosis nowadays. I'm going to lay this one out there. And this has been one that I've been a little bit skittish about. And I'm just going to go and shoot straight for the main event. If they give. Hunter and Roman time to genuinely build the match and tell the story that needs to be told. Real fans will buy in. My fear is that they will be put in a position where they have to rush. And lo and behold, fans do see that. And from this vantage point, if they end up having to rush the way they tell the tale in this match, it's going to be over a 100,000 people booing Roman Reigns out of the building because they didn't give people time to wrap their heads around it. Agree or disagree, Stan Grubb? Uh, you know, anytime you rush a finish, especially on a main event, people can smell it a mile away. Um, one of the things that they just announced today was that the match is now no DQ. So that's going to build more time for them. Knowing Triple H the way he is, he will stretch that, especially if he does a kind of like Brock did last year, a long, torturous beatdown of Roman Reigns to get the crowd behind Reigns. But here's the problem. it's it's This is one of those guys, Triple H has become one of those guys that no matter what he does, he gets cheers. Similar to Ric Flair, similar similar to Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, what he does now, people just like what he does, regardless of who it's against. So unless, <clears throat> and and I'm my <laughs> one third of the triple threat would be upset with me for saying this, but I'm going to call shenanigans and say that we are going to see all sorts of run-ins on this from both the heel and face locker room. And it's going to be one of those times where it's just too much booking. It's going to be a TNA esque main event. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Shane Knowles. Well, it goes back to what I spoke of when we've expanded, we keep expanding uh, the granddaddy of them all. I, it's just back when to me that the main event would have to be rushed. And I, I guess that's just critiquing from a promoter standpoint at Peach state, you know, our biggest events are going to go three, possibly three and a half hours. We normally work in the two to two and a half hour time frame, but in five hours, I just, I would hate to know that that main event has to be rushed because 
some celebrity has to be shown or some access video that may run 10 minutes or some hype video for Mania. We're already watching the show. That, we don't need that. Okay, I'll get off the high horse. Uh, to the match. I have no doubt that they will lay out a good match. Triple H is one of the best big match guys out there as far as laying out something with good false finishes, with good little twists and turns. Just like last year, the consensus was this WrestleMania is going to blow, it's going to be the worst of all time, and it blew most everyone away. And I really enjoyed the way the whole Brock and Roman match was laid out. I mean, the way Roman kept smiling with a busted lip, give me more. And I mean, you know, they've managed to get Rollins in there and get the belt on him without pinning Lesnar, which I thought was beautifully done. But for this year, if they go status quo, if they go chalk, like you're filling out your NCAA tournament bracket, and it's just, no matter what, Reigns is going to be standing at the end of Mania with that belt, and he's supposed to be presented as the new face of the company. They've already shown that they've already going to crap all over it, and they're going to stomp on it, and they're going to wipe twice. And I don't know. I, I still don't think it's too late. I mean, what if Triple H retains? Because I think it's always become the the champion will be crowned at Mania. I think there's only one or two, and Triple H was involved in those, where the belt did not change hands. What if they just didn't do it? And I think if they do that, if Triple H is left at the end of WrestleMania with that belt, he's going to get maybe face cheers, as Stan alluded to, that's going to rock uh, Texas Stadium or Jerry's World. And uh, is that what they want? I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's confounding. And to me, I would, have, I would do this. I, if, they're, if they're determined for Reigns to go over, the very next night, I would have him in a promo saying, I won this belt. I did it without you. You guys didn't believe in me from day one, and I sure as hell don't need you now. You turn him heel, what you need to do. He has the belt, which they want, and maybe they can work something off that with guys like Ambrose and Lesnar challenging and Seth Rollins coming down the pipe as well as the team. Honestly, I think they are in a limited win situation. And this is just me being me on this one. And I, I, you know me, I love to play devil's advocate. I will go back to what I said a minute ago. Time is their best friend and time is their enemy. Because if you tell the tale, but see, how many times can they tell the same damn story? I mean, legitimately, how many times can they tell the same damn story? So... You've gotten him over, you screwed it up. You got him over, you screwed it up. You got him over huge, and you screwed it up again. Can they get it right this time and make it stick? That's going to be the question. Legitimately. Turning the table, so to speak, I'm going to go ahead and say, Shane, pick up your gun. Your turn. Fire one. Oh, my turn. Well, uh, before we come back to this year's Mania, and it is the biggest weekend in pro wrestling for all of us involved, whether it be fan, uh, announcer, commentator, referee, booker, promoter, talent, manager, valet, uh, this is not just WrestleMania weekend, but all the things going on around with NXT and ROH and independent shows, which we'll get to. Uh, Since this is the Shooter's Gallery, before we go back to this year's Mania, I want to ask both Eddie and Stan, underrated WrestleMania matches. Now, we all know the ones that wind up in the top five or top ten list that you may see on the BuzzFeed or WWE.com or Pro Wrestling Illustrator, the ones that fans talk about. But in your mind, it may not be one that is ever talked about, kind of like when I spoke to George Wells and you go, hmm, I forgot about him. It could be that type of match to you personally and why you think it's underrated. And I'll go to Stan Grubb first, like one of your most Underrated WrestleMania matches that maybe does not get the critical acclaim throughout the years that it probably should. Uh, overall through history or specifically to last year's? Uh, overall history, yeah. Previous 31. Uh, WrestleMania 7, the Rockers versus uh, Haku and the Barbarian. Mm. The uh, tag match was, was free-flowing. It was fast. It was. It got the fans on their feet. Kept them on their feet a majority of the night, or majority of the match. I think. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I mean, I'm a Shawn Michaels mark as it is. That's not a secret. Sure. But the the bottom line on that match was it really was and should have been the Rockers coming out party as far as 
being the main tag team in, in WWF, and they never did get their due. Never got the titles, other than that botched, you know, top rope deal. Two out of three falls of the Heart Foundation. That's crazy. Yep. Eddie? There's a number of matches that pop into my head, but none that just really stick as far as being genuinely underrated. I mean, I can think of matches that Savage has had over the years. I can think, you know... I read a story recently where somebody was bringing up the Hulk Hogan versus Vince McMahon match at Mania 19. Um, I think that the Steiners had a very underrated run in WWE. At least in my book, they were. I mean, they were. I mean, you can pick any star practically and let's pull one out of the hat. How many people do you really t- hear talk about the, fact, uh, the match between Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig and um, the Big Boss Man? Mm. Yeah. I mean, also at WrestleMania 7. Yeah. I mean, keeping the world in proper perspective, I honestly will sit back and say, and I know this phrase has been prostituted and whored out more often than I've got active brain cells. Of course, after today, that count is kind of low. I've got to recharge. Finger, light socket now. <laughs> okay. And, but you never hear people really talk about the big boss man or big Bubba Rogers or boss having bad matches. And God knows the match that he had with Hennig was good, but you always have, I mean, it's like, what was it? Uh, wasn't it mania 10 that was Owen Brett? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mania 10 for the most part is going to be remembered for Owen and Brett and a little bit of everything else. Uh, HBK and Razor Ramon. Yeah, but still. I mean, it's the standard bearer for a ladder match, so yeah. Understand. Randy Savage and Crush and the Falls Count Anywhere match. True. <laughs> Great street fight, really. Yeah. I mean, it was a good street fight between the two of them. I mean, so, I mean, there's... I always no- thought Crush was underrated in general. Oh, hugely. Mm-hmm. Hugely. Um, God... You know, we I just got one off the top of my head while Eddie's thinking. Go ahead. WrestleMania two, when the British Bulldogs with Ozzy Osbourne defeated the dream team of Brutus BK and Greg Valentine. Yeah. Pop from that crowd when yeah. they got those tag team belts. Good Lord. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't WrestleMania two the same match that uh, when it, uh, the Funks were on that show? Yeah. Hoss, awesome, Funk, and Terry. Yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 they took on Junkyard Dog and somebody. Oh, God, come on, help me. Um, Tito Santana, that's who it was. Yeah. Junkyard Dog and Tito Santana took Chico on the Funks. Santana. Yeah, with the flying jalapeno. Took on the Funks at WrestleMania <laughs> 2. I actually remember that. Thank you for helping John. Wasn't it Ventura, they used to call him, Ventura used to call him uh, the Texican. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Funny. Chico Santana, the Texican. <laughs> yeah, from Tacula, Mexico. Yeah, I just yeah I mean that one's another one that just popped in my head because it's like remembering the fact that both Dory and Terry or uh, Terry Funk and Dory Funk Jr. former NWA world heavyweight champions and the Funks have also been world tag team champions in the NWA yet lo and behold I think that they were I think that their run in the in the Fed was okay Terry had a much better run than Dory but I think that their run could have been so much better, but I think that their style was so not what w, uh, what Vince Senior, Jr. was looking for for the WWF at that time. I mean, he was looking to go comic book characters, and I'm sorry, the Funks are brass tacks grassroots wrestlers. Even when Terry went Chainsaw Charlie on everybody's ass. <laughs> but, you know, they're... And it's I like, hated that gimmick. I was so angry when they did Chainsaw Charlie. I was so mad. I was such a bitter fan. Why? Because it wasn't funny. Like I, I here's this guy that I've loved watching all throughout his NWA days. His feud with Flair was one of my favorite. It's actually one of the things that really made me a big fan of both Flair and Terry Funk. And to see him be paraded around as Chainsaw freaking Charlie, I was like, what? Where do you get this crap? And you knew it was a. It was one of those things that. It's like they didn't want to call him Terry Funk because that would be wrong, I guess. God forbid you have Cactus Jack and Terry Funk. 
as a tag team. No, no, no. no. We got to have Chainsaw freaking Charlie. It bothered me too because I thought Vince had gotten away from we're going to call Lex Luger the narcissist or we're going to call Kurt Henning Mr. P- I thought we'd gotten away from those gimmicks because it's been a few years. And the fact that Terry Punk is a former NWA champion, yes, but he has competed in the WWF and had his own LJ in figure as well. I'm just like you. Why was he not allowed to be Terry Punk? We have to put pantyhose over our head and be Chainsaw Charlie. I got one that I just remembered and actually I cheated when I was, um, because I started going back and I started looking because there was one person, there was one match that never gets talked about. And this is actually one that just started going ding, 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 ding in my head. The second I saw the names, it's like, holy crap, you're right. It did take place. Roddy Piper, Bret Hart, WrestleMania eight. Great match for the intercontinental title. You talk about two master storytellers. Oh, hell yeah. I was say, a particular moment sticks out in that match when Piper had the uh, timekeeper's belt and just milking it to the crowd, raising it above his head if he was going to hit Brett, who had already bladed. And, you know, the crowd, no, and Piper raises again, no, like you said, Master Storyteller. And, of course, great Bobby Heenan commentary. You don't want to hit him with the bell? Hell, give it to me. I'll hit it. Well, I mean, you talk about another, if we're sticking with Intercontinental title, I think WrestleMania five, Rick Rude and the Ultimate Warrior doesn't get enough credit. I thought that was a great match yeah. between the two. It really and Rick Rude had a way of making making your heroes look even more heroic, no matter what he did. He was just one of those people that would sell when he, t- especially the back bump. He just yeah, he always knew how to make it look good. Yeah. I'm gonna give you one, and I'll digress on this. I think this wasn't at a WrestleMania, but anyone that's ever heard me, I can't believe I've never even told Eddie this. I think the most underrated match in WWE history to me, and that's a lot. But in your house, by December 17th, 1995, Bret Hart defeated the British Bulldog in a match that went 21 minutes. Bret uh, bled in that match, too. The British Bulldog getting him the running power slam on the exposed concrete. I remember Bret doing a uh, like a single-arm Irish whip where Bulldog took the flip into the turnbuckle. I mean, those two guys brought it in a style that we weren't seeing a lot. In main events, and of course, the match a little bit looking back is marred now with uh, who was British Bulldog's wife? What was her name? Diana Hart. Diana. Yeah, they're always showing the camera on her, which one was her allegiance to. But that match, and I've showed it to a couple of guys over the year, like, like, yeah, you know, I, I think I remember watching that. We pulled up on the network. Now like, that is a damn good heavyweight title match, but just never really seemed to get it to anywhere. I've got one I want to throw at you real quick, and like I said, I did I did a fancy bit of cheating, but I found one little stat. Um, and I'm going with Ble- um, Bleacher Report on this particular note. On WWE.com's <laughs> list of the 30 best WrestleMania matches, the, under- wow. the Undertaker appears six times. There is one match in particular that did not make the cut featuring The Undertaker. WrestleMania <laughs> X8, Undertaker versus Ric Flair. That was oh, a I, cool match because Flair and uh, Arn Anderson got in the mix. Yeah, I was going to say Arn came out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that match, and I remember it was a very good. I, mean, I remember Flair going color on that one, but by the same token, I'm going to sit back and say, I think that match should have made the cut. Yeah, I mean, when you said some didn't make the cut, I knew the world title defense against Psycho Sid or Giant Gonzalez would not be in the mix. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Tell you what, let's spin the wheel. Let's go ahead and say we're going to put the butt of the gun in Stan Grubb's hand. Lock and load. Uh, you know what? Here's a lot of things that I've been seeing on Twitter that drives me insane. Here's here's one thing. People complaining about Roman Reigns getting the title and yet thinking that Triple H is the best possible choice for world champion. You have so many possible talented guys I mean, Dean Ambrose, for one, who they should have pulled the trigger on him a long time ago. But the thing that just irks the hell out of me are these guys that aren't even in their 20s that start talking about people they think should be champion. I know it's kind of a bitter fan thing for me, but I can't stand it. It's like if you think that at the at the ripe age of 20 that you have a firm grasp – on who should be booked, quote-unquote, as the champion or not champion, 
you really should step back and take a look at your life because you just don't have a firm <laughs> grasp on anything related to wrestling, much less business. It drives me nuts. And I'm not a booker. I'm just a, a hardcore fan, but I can't stand it when they do that. People love to just complain, complain, complain. The segment with Roman Reigns and Triple H where he beats the tar out of Triple H in the backstage area was money. And fans loved it. Why? Because Roman Reigns did exactly what he was supposed to do, and that's be a freight train that no one can stop. But instead, instead we get some of this other stuff where fans are like, oh, that's still not going to sell. It's like, dude, give the guy a chance. He's doing everything in his power to get over, whether he's the chosen one in your eyes or not. I mean, <laughs> these are people that will probably never step foot out of their mom's basement, much less into a gym. And they're complaining about who's booked where and why. I, it drives me nuts. Those are the devoted followers of one Dave Meltzer. Those are the things that irk me the most. Sorry. No, it's perfectly <laughs> fine. <laughs> no, it's okay. I don't want to say I've been a uh, proud subscriber to the Wrestling Observer newsletter for 12 years, but I don't share that sentiment. I uh, Whenever I riff on the way Reigns is positioned, I call it the booking. I, I, Reigns, I wholeheartedly agree with you. He's doing everything he possibly can. And I feel bad for Roman Reigns, the reaction he's getting, because he deserves better. I'm going to toss the poll question at you currently on WWE.com. Which WrestleMania match are you most looking forward to? And the, the choices are Triple H versus Roman Reigns, Shane McMahon versus The Undertaker, the Divas title match, Sasha, ba um, Sasha Charlotte and Becky, or Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar. Stan, which one are you looking for? Going by the poll question, pick one. Shane versus The Undertaker. Shane. Nothing's going to top, I think, Shane versus Undertaker, because you just know that's going to have the crowd. But me personally, the triple threat women's title now, I think they're dropping the diva from that, uh, from what I hear. But I'm actually looking forward to see if those three ladies get the opportunity that Charlotte's been able to have on some of the more recent pay-per-views, I think they can deliver a fine match. And that, and that division needs that. It, because honestly, when we talk about mania moment, with ladies or divas or women's matches, what have you, you'd be hard pressed to name five or six, even though they've been competing on and off since the first WrestleMania with Moolah and Wendy Richter that really stand out. They need that signature moment and they don't need it out there, which I'm so glad to see in bra and panties and lingerie and pillows. They're going to get a chance to work. I wanted baby oil, but it didn't get it. Oh, well, back to the Atlanta nudie bars. Um, poll results, <laughs> uh, poll results on WWE.com. Shane McMahon versus the undertaker. 49%. Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar, 25%. Triple H and Roman Reigns, 17%. Ouch. Charlotte, Sasha, Becky, 8%. You people are idiots. I'm sorry. I voted for the women's match. Thank you as well. Yes, because I genuinely feel, and this is the part that I'm genuinely appreciative of, is the simple fact that these three are part of that NXT revolution. You don't have to deal with Brie Bella or Naomi or Alicia Fox. And for the love of God, why are they going to put that redheaded menace in the 10 Diva match? You actually Apparently have. They thought it was going to be a big face pop that just blew up in their face. The, uh, shoot. I don't know why they thought that'd be a good reaction. I really yeah, don't. that went over like an elephant farting at a funeral. Can elephants do that? I have no idea. It just sounded good. That was just one Damn of the... Damn it! What? Uh, sorry, I just got got on Facebook. I'm reading an article. CM Punk released from his UFC contract, WWE return. Kfabenews.com, huh? And then, no, it's a legit article, and it goes, he says, my dream of being in the UFC came true. I did make some money and sold some merch without ever actually competing. I can say I'm undefeated, but I just wish I could have competed. A lot of people think this may lead to a return Sunday at Mania, which Punk would not deny. By the way, April Fools. I'm like, <laughs> I was that thinking to be, I was hoping it was kayfabe news. I was going to start laughing. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I love that side. That's I do cool. too. But see, here's the thing. And I brought this up uh, and the ultimate scenario on how they can genuinely save everything and have people talking about this for, for the next year is if, out of the clear blue, 
Lillian Garcia or JoJo or Chimmel or Howard Finkel or whoever they have doing, or whoever's doing the announcing on this match. Ladies and gentlemen, the following match is scheduled for one fall. And here comes cult of personality. There would be no roof left on the AT&T stadium. <laughs> and if the second person out of the gate, when you hear the glass, that's your ass. You know that the walls would fall. And I don't mean the walls of Jericho. It, because I remember, do think uh, Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold being in Texas, one or both, surely would be involved in the event. Okay. Um, I think, well, you know, Austin's made the comment about he didn't want a send-off match, but he'd also made comment on more than one occasion that he would have loved to have worked Punk, and Punk has made the um, the comment that he would have loved to have worked Austin. Mm-hmm. He, um, all of a lot of people genuinely felt that that would have been a very good match. Advance warning for everybody listening live through Ustream right now. Um, Studio One in Birmingham, Alabama. I am hearing the weather. I'm hearing the thunder in the distance and seeing lightning shadows through my window. So if we lose the signal through Ustream, we apologize. We're going to save what we've got and run from there, but we're going to keep this thing going for as long as we can. That's why we're not taking commercial breaks at this point, even though I've got everything balanced out to where we can actually do the breaks now. Son of a bitch. I hate it when that happens. Um, <laughs> now, I'm going to run down, and I keep looking on WrestleMania.com and WWE.com for the complete lineup, which I have yet to freaking see. There's- it's on WWE.com. Where? Um, that's where I pulled it from on Sunday. Give me a moment, and I'll grab it again. But <clears throat> I have the card. It's actually also linked on my Facebook page because I got tagged in – one of those bracket deals. I won't do March Madness, but damn it, I'll do a WrestleMania pick em. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you would. <laughs> hey, My hey, bro- hey, you, you guys are the pros. I'm the fan. I get to do these things. Oh, when, it comes to, when it comes to picking, <laughs> I got my ass handed to me this year. Oh, I never do the brackets. Yeah. I suck at those things. I was going to say, I do have my North Carolina Tar Heels in our second chance back, and Eddie was not incorrect by saying he's ringing down our group. Well, it looks like I botched my prediction as far as the Wizards beating the Warriors, by the way. Sorry about that. That's what I get for being a homer. Oh, I wanted to bring that up, too, because we all wanted to take Utah in last night's game, and, God, they blew such a huge lead, and it just felt like once they went to overtime, their goose was cooked. But we were close. With the people that are involved, I'm going to run down this list, and I'm seeing one, and I'm not calling what's on pre-show and what's on the main show. But I'm going to go and throw this out there. Relevance to a WrestleMania buildup. Does this match belong? Yes or no? Easy enough. I'm not going to make it hard. You don't even have to say why. Kalisto versus Ryback for the United States Championship. Shane. No. Stan, did we lose you? No, I'm here. I'm here. I just sent you a photo. Oh, okay. It's in, the, it's in production chat. Okay, dope. Let me, uh, uh, before Stan answers, I will say yes, if the rumors of Goldberg coming out are true. But as a match of standalone, no. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Stan, does it belong? No, it really doesn't. Uh, Kalisto is a solid singles performer and U.S. champ. Ryback, I think his ship has sailed. Unless, like Shane described, Goldberg or something like that in- happens, it has no place on a WrestleMania. Much less a B-grade, or C-grade, or D-grade um Pay-per-view. Sorry. I, I, I'm not a believer in Ryback. I think his ship has sailed. I think his attitude um, is part of the reason that we don't have a CM Punk anymore. I mean, the guy was careless. He hurt him. Hurt him twice. Hurt him three times. Didn't care. And then mocked him on Twitter. You know, I've got to sit back and say this. If the match were Kalisto versus Neville, I'd be all over it. I'd say, well, hell yes, WrestleMania match. But yeah, I'm just... Neville's hurt. I am just not a huge fan of Ryback. He had his moments, and it's getting closer. Um, <laughs> not his moments, but <laughs> that light, nice little loud noise. Here's a question. With no Seth Rollins, no John Cena, no Randy Orton you know, that we know of as far as in scheduled matches, you look at it all the time, uh, the showstopper, Shawn Michaels, Daniel Bryan. Who do you think, and of course, this is a lot of what the he will allow you to do, but who do you think sets up and steals this WrestleMania? What performer or what two performers in a match or three, be it the case? 
I'm going to jump in on that one first, and I'm just going to say Styles Jericho steals the damn show. Stan? Yeah, you know what? It's kind of a toss-up. I would say it's either Styles Jericho or Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens in the ladder match. Yeah, because yeah. ladder matches are built for them. Shane? And I was Well, I think Styles Jericho has the potential to steal the match if it's not put in the damn opener, in my opinion. If they allow that thing to go on, maybe third, fourth, fifth, somewhere in there, yes. I, I just, I have a feeling you talked about Rush. I feel if they're in the opener, they're not going to get the time that that match deserves. Should the Usos and the Dudleys be on the main show, Stan? No. Shane? Uh, no. No, I, I don't like that. You know, when you just present me the match, I'm thinking Mania, and again, I think the, the lack of depth on the roster, I get it, but still, no. <laughs> If it was a tag team title match, hell yes. But it's not a tag team title match, and we've seen this match a number of times, no. But I will sit back and say this. What if it's a last gasp move by the authority? Let's take the free bird rule and bend it. Let's make New Dave, how, how more intriguing would this be? Four on three, League of Nations versus New Day. Elimination match. Last man wins for his for his team. Stan, like it, love it, buy or sell. Well, my friend, it's funny you should mention that. Son of a gun. Scooped earlier today, League of Nations versus New Day is a tag team championship match. Now, do we see the free bird rules? You know, it's a possibility because of the Freebirds going in because of all of these things. Yeah, I say I think that's a good move. I think that's smart, and I think to do two things: to build a heel tag team for the New Day to chase after, and I think they will, and to turn New Day completely face in the eyes of fans. That's what gets League of Nations the belts. Shane Knowles. Yeah, I agree. The whole fact now that the New Day is inducting the Freebirds into the Hall of Fame the previous night before makes all the sense in the world. And as far as uh, people that can feel, I think a lot of eyes are on the new day at this WrestleMania to come out of it even bigger. I mean, you know, they could be the ones that steal the show, but I don't care if it's costumes, comedy, their work rate or something. They could be the one. Gentlemen, I'm going to have to go ahead and throw a monkey wrench in everything because with everything starting to light up a little bit more, I'm afraid we're going to start having blink outs here again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open the door, Stan. I know that you and the guys from corner to corner are going to be calling in Sunday at 7 p.m. East. Hold on. 5 to 7, 6. Um, 4 to 6, 5. So you are going to come, at, um, come in at the 6 p.m. segment, right? That's what we're aiming for. Okay. Um, I am going to probably call in from the road and get the guys to link in. I'm not sure. We're going to try to put it together, um, but I do have a very special announcement since we're doing this. Um, we will be doing, much like we did for the Rumble, a simulcast. We'll have uh, the show going on in the background. We will we'll be recording our own brand of play-by-play, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> So you're gonna do that I'm through your. Of that. You're gonna do that during your uh, through your spe- uh, speaker channel, correct? Yeah, I'll be recording. Um, we'll, we'll probably air it live. I I won't guarantee it <laughs> because when I'm over at uh, the Glass Enclosed Nerve se- Center of Cole Peppel, Virginia, um, it's it's a little bit shaky as far as internet, but we will do our best. Okay. Um, Shane, door is open um, during any segment. Like I said, uh, we're going to be going five to seven all the way through up until when Mania kicks off. So um, pick one of the times. Like I said, you're welcome to come in during seg one, two, three, or four. Doors definitely open, sir. Cool. Thank you for the invite. And do me a favor. Let's go ahead and toss out shameless plugs real quick while we still have power. And um, Shane, I'll turn it your way. Shameless plugs all the up. Uh, and I really wanted to go a little bit more, uh, uh, really a lot in depth on the card for this coming Sunday. So if you want to run that one down for um, shameless and last call, feel free. Sure. Wrap it up in a nice bunch. This Saturday, April 2nd, Carrollton, Georgia, Peach State Wrestling Alliance. Uh, what I put earlier today on social media, I don't think is hyperbole in my mind, and I know some people may say as a promoter, yeah, right, but I really feel this Saturday's card has a little bit of everything. The quest to be the best PWA Heritage title tournament continues, closing out the first round 
the French sensation, Romeo versus Kyle Matthews. Well, we have confirmed that we'll kick off the event Saturday. Second round match, C.B. Suave versus the savior of pro wrestling, Jimmy Rabe. Uh, also involved will be myself, the No Limits champion, Kevin Blue, Nigel Sherrod with the Wicked Nemesis against the backbone, Michael Stevens and Zach Edwards, the beautiful ball besties, along with Drew Adler. In a six-man street fight, pinfalls count anywhere. And I'm also so excited for the debuts Bill Barron's has acquired. Uh, Mexican rock star Vade Morales will debut against Stitch Cypher. I will lift a phrase from Eddie Lane's playbook, don't blink. Uh, these two, buckle your seatbelts because the laws of gravity will be challenged. And also debuting, uh, he did a promo at the last event featuring his in-ring debut, yet to be determined opponent, the project Dustin Bosworth, a trainee of Handsome Harley Race, as well as a competitor on uh, Stone Cold's Broken Skull Challenge last year. Uh, the guy is built like a brick ice house. Can't wait to see him in action uh, front row seating is gone across the stage and uh, ringside for this event, but you can still reach us at TWAFanBase at Yahoo.com or by calling 770-328-2251, 770-328-1162. Check us out on PeachStateWrestlingAlliance.com, uh, at the real TWA on Twitter. You can check out myself, Shane Nove, on Twitter. Uh, also, Peach State Wrestling Alliance is on Instagram. Stan Grubb, shameless plugs. Uh, this Sunday night, of course, is WrestleMania. We're looking forward to it. Myself, Brian Taylor, and Rob Hefner will be enjoying it live from the Culpeper, Virginia. Can't wait to see the show. I got to say this. The prediction here is that when Shane McMahon goes over, not if but when, everything hmm. at WrestleMania will change after the fact. So I think we could very easily see either someone else inserted – into the main event, much like last year, or we could see a special guest referee to throw a little bit of a twist, if you will. So that's what I'm predicting and thinking it's going to happen. At the same point, catch us on Twitter, C2C Radio Show, and uh, on Facebook at Corner to Corner Show. So uh, check us out. We definitely appreciate your time, and as always, it's my pleasure to hang out with you awesome people. Folks, real quick. Uh, Shooter's Gallery, of course, taking place tonight. Uh, we will not be airing on Saturday morning. we got a lot of things we need to cover, but it, um, unfortunately, we're going to go ahead and take things straight into Sunday. Who knows? We may kick off a couple minutes early Sunday. You just never know what's going to happen. We will have a full recap from the Peach State Show. Also, getting ready for a number of events, and I want to run them down very quickly. Um, Saturday, April the 9th. In Dalton, Georgia, Global Championship Wrestling back in action in Dalton at the Community Center. Also, Saturday, April the 9th, Moxville, North Carolina, Big Time Wrestling Carolinas will be crowning their very first heavyweight champion. Triple threat match, Crimson, Ricky Reyes, Gunner in the main event. Once again, that's Moxville, North Carolina. Thank you very much to Stephen Fry for helping set up the interview with Gunner a couple of um, Tuesdays ago. That interview is up and rotating on all fronts. Podomatic, Stitcher, Spreaker, Downcast, iHeartRadio, iTunes, you name it, it's out there. Check out the interview. Gunner is always a great time. Thank you to the authority, Dave Wills, for coming on board this past Tuesday night. Always a blast. And Shane, he has threatened to show up this coming Saturday in Carrollton. Oh, really? My good friend, Dave Wills, has threatened to show up and uh, I wanted to say this real quick I didn't get a chance on last call or not a chance I forgot uh, going along with Stan's predictions I think that the franchise and I still call him that Sting will be involved in some match in some way shape or form come this Sunday and also I wanted to say a tip of the hat much deserved Stan Hansen going into the Hall of Fame this weekend I'm also going to sit back and say one other little thing. It would not surprise me in the least because remember, if Sting does do something in the Hell in a Cell match to back up Shane McMahon, that all has something to do with the fact that Shane McMahon still owns WCW. Brilliant. Saw that coming a mile away, too, and I'm ready to have some fun with it. Folks, of course, BeyondRingside.com is the home, as well as ProWrestlingRadio.net. Thank you to everybody tuning in through all the various sources throughout the course of the week. Greatly appreciated. Thank you to AJ Steele for coming on board last night with uh, the To Be Determined show Wednesday night. That was, of course, March 30th. Yeah. I don't have my calendar in front. I'm going off memory. I have a short-term memory problem. What did I just say? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but... AJ came on last night and dropped some bombs. 
including the R word. Mm. Yeah, slang for stepping away. Damn. So he's also promised that he would be coming back on the To Be Determined show very soon. And nobody's going to be safe. No kidding. Folks, if you have the, the Beyond Ringside radio app for Amazon, Android, and BlackBerry, don't forget you can catch the live broadcast this Sunday, 5 to 7 Eastern, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you have TuneIn radio, you can catch the live broadcast. If you have Ustream, you can catch the live broadcast. We will find a way to make this work one way or the other. Thank you again for hanging with us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for going Beyond Ringside. For tag team partner Shane Knowles. Have yourselves a great weekend. Enjoy WrestleMania. It's the reason we all started to watch. Almost. Heather, you hear the background. My area, so I don't guys have to say goodbye. He is now getting the thunder. <laughs> Can you feel the thunder? <laughs> Garth, where are you when I need you? Meanwhile, for Stan Grubb. I'm predicting shenanigans all around. Can't wait for Sunday. I'm predicting the grill's going to be fired up and ready to go at. Can we still, I'm, until it's official on Sunday, I'm still going to say hashtag lost cause. I'm going to get all the mileage I can out of that one. It was one of the better ones I've come up with. Until next time, I am the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane saying stay dry, stay safe. Adios, das Vidania, hasta luego, auf Wiedersehen, ciao, sayonara, adieu, 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 farewell, I'll be seeing you, au revoir, until we meet again, aloha, means bye-bye, and of course, thank you again for going beyond ringside. Bye for now.